Hello and welcome back to Project Hercules Diaries on a fairly wet Sunday morning. It is time to decompress after the night before and that's quite a good theme for today. You may have seen uh, yesterday I put on a video of connecting up the Dynastart just to see that it would actually turn over the motor and it does that quite well. So what I did yesterday was just a bit of a jury rig with what I got lying around. There's some old um, household twin and earth six mil cable I just connected that directly through a heavy duty switch onto the battery, which I took off the big red guzzy behind me. That one there. So I need to be a bit careful because I haven't bought a battery yet. It's one of those things where you could buy a battery too soon and then the battery's kind of dead because it's three, four, five years old before you've actually got to the point of riding the bike. I've, I've seen that a few times where people do a restoration of an old car or bike. The first thing they do is spend a fortune on tires and batteries and things that are very, very simple and um, quick to do uh, and still have years of rest restoration ahead of them and that type of thing. Anyway, I digress back to the bike and the starter motor which is here. So a bit of a jury rig with what was left lying around. Uh, I took the battery off the big red bike and then there's nothing to, no reason though you can't just still make some nice connectors and put a bit of heat shrink on. It's a heavy duty switch. I also had a, a pair of side cutters kicking around uh, right here so that on the, in the unlikely event that this heavy duty switch fused on, I didn't want the whole thing to be melting the wires or damaging the Dynastart if it wasn't actually rotating and not being able to disconnect it from the battery because obviously these were nicely firmly attached to the battery terminals. So the side cutters were sort of a belt and braces. I could just cut those wires quickly if I needed to, but that, that wasn't the case. They got a little bit warm because they're only six months. They're not really up for the job but just for a very very quick test to make sure it would turn the engine it worked quite well and as you can see on the video it does turn the engine but that was with the spark plugs out now when i put the spark plugs in and tried it it just about takes it over top dead center but when i say just about i mean just about it was really really slow at the at the top of the compression almost to the point of stopping and just over the top and that won't do because the Boyer Branston electronic ignition needs 80 rpm to read the signal and um, so that wouldn't really energize the sparks so we're going to need some kind of decompressor now that could be a big problem but we did think of this earlier so it's not uh, let me go over to the bench and I'll show you what the latest plan is on that right here we are on the bench and I have a old cylinder head from uh, another engine and I've got the head behind me in the vice, you probably can't see that, of the dummy engine in the corner. So this is a decompressor off a Royal Enfield bullet, 500 bullet. It's a very simple thing. It's like a little poppet valve that's operated by a cable. And I don't particularly like cables, but you can just press that down with your finger and it will open the poppet valve that then just vents out of here to the atmosphere. That screws into a standard spark plug uh, threaded hole in the in the top of the cylinder head uh, and away you go now as luck would have it as this is an aircraft engine there are two spark plugs because it would be magneto driven with two separate ignition systems and this does actually fit into a bristol hercules head fantastic so on the face of it i can take one of the spark plugs out i can replace the two six volt coils with a single 12 volt coil have one spark plug and fit the decompressor Brilliant. There is one small problem with doing that, however, and I'll just go over to that vice there and show you what that is. Right, so we're looking here, right down the top of a Bristol Hercules cylinder head. You can see one of the spark plugs is already installed there, and this is the decompression that would go next to it. But if I just hold that decompressor in situ, you can see that at the moment, the decompressor fills the hexagon uh, on the decompressor you'd use to tighten it up fills that void and it would be very difficult you might just about get a box spanner on top of that but it would be difficult to get that to be tightened up into the cylinder head so it's a case of either machining the head these cooling fins here to uh, make a bit more room for this uh, decompressor or modify this decompressor so you could perhaps take the uh, hexagon down in the mill so it was a thin hexagon and then modify the spring or put a different spring on so it's a bit thinner 
Um, that's another option we might consider because taking the head off the engine that's in the bike is a bit of a pain because you'd need to take the engine out. It used to come out, but we've since put the gusset plate in the top to hold the coils and now it won't come out without taking the engine out. I know the engine's coming out anyway, but if I don't need to take it out before I try and start it, that will be so much better. So that's one option. The other thing that's perhaps worth considering is that's not an awfully big hole there. So will it let enough um, of the pressure out to turn over the engine at the right speed? What we'll probably have to do is to activate the decompressor, let the dyna start take the engine up to the right speed and then at exactly the right moment, just at the top of compression, snap that shut. Let the momentum of the 50 kilogram flywheels take it over top dead center with the dyna start still engaged. Hopefully that's still uh, 80 RPM enough to energize the ignition and away we go. So we'll see. One of the job I'm just doing while I've got the spot while I've got the head in here is to get the um, spark plug spacers made and I'll show you that round the back. This is a spark plug that we intend to use. Uh, it's an old one and as you can see it protrudes beyond the uh, head into the combustion chamber. Now that's not a problem because the piston doesn't come anywhere near this. It's quite a low compression. There's about that much gap give or take. Uh, between the top of the piston and the bottom of the head at top dead center but you wouldn't want those threads gumming up with uh, carbon because when you take the plug out potentially you could strip the thread in the engine so the um, plug that I actually need with a half inch reach on the thread is available on paper but every time I've tried to buy it all of the online stock is comp completely out of stock so I have a brand new pair of Champions spark plugs here, but I'm going to have to make a pair of copper washers to go uh, just on top of the spark plug so that the thread depth is the correct length and they just come flush with the end of the head. The final thing to consider, if this is another old head, uh, this is an old cast iron head off a, an earlier generation of, of um, Hercules. If I wanted to, there is plenty of room in here to fit a much bigger decompressor. So I could make my own decompressor with a much bigger um, surface area that lets all of the pressure out. So I can always do that if, if necessary. I could fit two Royal Enfield decompressors and then be able to vary the compression or, or the decompression. But uh, at the moment, I'm keeping it simple. So the, the first plan is to fit this and a 12 volt coil and a single spark and see if we can get the engine to uh, turn over and fire. If that doesn't work, then I'll look at other ways of decompressing it or perhaps a, a more beefy starter motor than the Dyna Start, possibly even 24 volts. Um, all to play for, you never know till you try these things. So there's a little bit of contemplation today around the head and as i said at the start of the video time to decompress so there we go oh one last thing you can just see there i finally got around to doing the uh, the filler cap and just uh, to cheer myself up really so uh, i think that looks quite neat and it's um, a finished job right as usual thank you for watching more updates will follow